Morning everyone. So today we're at a Ford, a Ford Fiesta 2011 and it's a 1.6 diesel engine. That'll be the PC, PSA unit found in, found in Citroen and Peugeot, that kind of thing. So it's a guy I work beside. His complaint is battery not charging or low voltage charge and a intermittent parasitic draw. Oh, there we go. Here's the first thing. Dodgy turbo clamp. Need to tighten that one up. Anyway, so we've done a full scan. And um, in the ABS, missing communication with ECM to the powertrain. That's in the memory. It says data received from ECM is invalid. Body control, mirror full relay, mirror unfull relay, vehicle speed. Front display, private communication network, control module input, instrument control panel, lost com with ABS, missing communication with ECM, uh, positive temperature coefficient in the heater, power steering missing, so they're all complaining about communication with the ECM, uh, crash record output, dear knows. Medium speed can communication, power train control module, says normal. So, what we'll do, we'll do a kind of health check, see what it's charging at, and see what a parasitic draw is like. So, let's go into this one. The PCM, so we'll retrieve codes, there should be nothing in here. We're always better to do that, check it in the module. Because a quick system scan may not reveal everything, so we'll go key on engine off. This does a few tests within the ECM, tests a few components within the engine bay, so we'll try that first. And even that's like what it says. So let's go back out, back out. So we've shut everything down. You can see we're reading it upside down, sorry about that, but we're, we're drawing three amps. Four amps, but we need time for the whole thing to go to sleep, and Fords typically need 45 minutes. Uh, the guy also was uh, he said, Roddy, change the alternator. Well, that was it, we'll tighten that up. Change the alternator, said that was a bit of a, a pest of a job, very tight to get into. Uh, but what we're going to do, leave it to go to sleep and see what we get down to. So, that's our start position. Three amps. We decided to whip the cover off the fuse relay box and get old thermal imager. So thermal imagers went to sleep. So you can see these two top relays. Oh, do you want to point at them, my man? Right, I'll put, oops, sorry. oh here. Right, I the next one, Roddy. So that one there's hot, and his neighbour along from it is hot as well. And the other one is that one there. So there it's there, so that's hot. No excessively. So the very fact that that's 20 degrees, it's only hot relative to the rest. So. We'll keep an eye on them, but we're staying strong. Uh, four amps. So we thought we'd just pull out some of the relays to see if it made any difference to the ramp draw. Uh, no difference. There's that one. A bit tight that, eh? Get that one out. No any difference. Still exactly the same. So what I think we're going to go in, try to isolate the circuit within here to see what is getting fed over these four terminals. We've isolated it down to the first circuit here. Seems to be red and blue wire. You can see that's pulling 3.92 amps. So we need to get a wiring diagram. So that one's red and blue, this one's red and green, pure red 
and the yellow. So let's get a diagram and see where that feeds. The planning action is, I've not got a good enough diagram, but we see that wire, the red and blue, we don't know where that goes to. So what we're going to do is release this little 8 or 10 mil bolt, and we suspect it maybe feeds this fuse box. So I'll let you see. That, uh, that's live at the moment, so we'll disconnect that wire. I'll at least get rid of your draw, and then... Is that a 70 amp fuse, Roddy, it's protecting that circuit? 50 amp fuse. We need to find out what circuits that's affecting. So... We've still got power at that fuse box at the moment. So, found out it's not that fuse box anyway. So what did you get a click here, Roddy? So Roddy says he just heard a click. Right, my man. Mm. That's, that's like the main ECM power now, isn't it? Oh, look at that. Do that again, my man. There you go, that, that's, that's what 4 amps looks like. <laughs> so... Like something's piling up in here anyway. Mmm. Do you think it was maybe this? What it take? Could be, but I, I didn't hear it again. No. 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 That's it. Yeah, that's it. Right. Mm. So, once we take. Oh! Just, just to prove a point, eh? It's actually higher now, ready. Up at four. So once we take this wire off, that's more like at 180 milliamps. That would come down eventually, but something, something on that line is pulling four amps. We're going hunt for a diagram. We've established so far is this fuse here is called PTC1, and it's a 50 amp fuse. And the one next to it is a 70 amp, then it's a 200 amp, and then, oh wait, here's a, here's a better picture. Take that clear off. So this is a fuse we're attacking, PTC150 amp. And that says it supplies an auxiliary heater. There's the one next to it, 70 amp, then it's 200 amp, and then it's, is that electric power assisted steering? 60 amp. So that's the steering one. Steering one there, 200 amp one there, 70 amp, we're attacking the 50 amp. Seemingly these are two auxiliary heaters, but I'm not sure if my wire diagram's wrong. So, there we go. I'm not sure if that is violet and red, or blue and red, I think it's violet and red. You can actually see, at this stage, we're only pulling four amps. But if we connect this guy back up, We're going over limit. So there we go, we're pulling 16 amps on that wire, whatever that is. So we'll leave that on and shut the car back down. But I'm reading a diagram that says it's an auxiliary heater. So I'm wondering, is it an auxiliary heater for the coolant system to make it uh, heat up quicker, or for the diesel system? No, sh no sure at all. I don't know what it goes to. There, there's, there it's come back down, we'll disconnect it again. It's pulling 10 amps with the key on. So that's that's more than one component, I would say. So let's me shut the car down. Right, we'll take this away. So there you go, that, that's what it should be like. And there you go, then it's going to sleep now. But that circuit is a mystery. We put it back in. It is winding down, but mm. put the air box out. 
and I use this gadget, the ECT transmitter. So you can see that goes down through it, so it's a short circuit. So the wire goes along here. Right there. The wire goes along there, it goes up into this fuse box, right? So when we're on the fuse box, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. But if we, we lie along, it's like... I'm not sure it's maybe... In, Going off everywhere now. Nothing there. Nothing. Yeah. No conclusive. Well, I've just about half stripped down this car, but there was a box lying down here next to the washer bottle. And we've stripped that out, and I think you can see the lovely colour of green in there, and there's a purple. A red wire there, so we're going to strip that out. Looks like a relay box. I don't know what's to do with, but it's always a bad sign that, or a good sign because we've been at this for hours. Right, see what, see what it brings forth. He's here, so Roddy's going to wiggle this about, and you can actually watch the meter. Look at that! Oh, I think we're at the right. Oh, definitely, Roddy. That's it. Oh, look at the stuff coming out of it. Keep going, my man. There's that much muck coming out of it. Yeah, it's really stuff. We'll roll the power off it, eh? I think it's clapped here. Let's see. Let's see. I'll get back to you when it's out. So there you go, there's a problem. We need to try and clean that up best as we can. Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> Fairly bits, it's up, that's the worst, it's totally corroded in. So let's, proof, proof of concept. And that's the wire, it's causing it. Alright, the sparks anywhere, is there? Let's put a ramps clamp on. Zero. Zero it. There we go, that's more healthy. And then we shut the car down and Bob's your uncle. So, what that really has got to do with, I don't know, maybe it is an auxiliary heater, but it's because it's low down. Where was it? Oh, it's just here. It just sat there. The water bottle. Near the water bottle, so. That's what it could be getting, see? So the water bottle did. Could be. Oh, why that would be where it is. There we go. So, Roddy's saying when the, when the person who owns this, you know who you are, Grant. <laughs> when you're filling up your water bottle, it's going down right into the relay, and there's your problem, lad. One five. Oh. If we lock the car up, I lock the car. Let's lock the car. More amps, and then it take a dive again. There we go. We'll live with that. 150 milliamps, and it will slowly come down. So once again, Sandy got to the bottom. Of it. Roddy was stuck. <laughs> Is that right, Gus? No, no, really. Well, you're right, didn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much, cheers. Yeah. There's the remnants of the relay. Beautiful, and there's the actual relay there, pull that up now. Oh, look at the side of that, totally burnt. Oh. There you go, that's what was causing the initial 20 amps, and then it fell down to six, uh, four amps, but four, uh, we still think it's a heater, because uh, I already noticed this. If you notice that wire, is that's that purple and red, and the other one is green and red, and if you go up to here, that's green and red there, and that one's purple and red, so they're a direct feed into that, so if anybody knows what this is for, we think it's a auxiliary heater, but no sure, not sure. Well. We're back at the car this morning, so we tried contacting Ford, uh, but we believe to get this bit really with the base and everything like that because it's so chewed up. 
you're part of the wiring loom. So we're just going to take it, we've got another relay here with part of the wiring, so we're just going to mate it in, just going to solder it up, pop it back in the box and see how we go after that. But uh, I made up this little clamp thing here, just with a bit of stiff wire and two little clamps at my favourite shop, Lidl. And uh, we're going to solder that wire first, then solder the rest and put it all back in the box and seal it up as best as possible. So, let's see how we go. Hold it. I'm not attempting this. I'm leaving it to the master. <laughs> so, key to that is putting on some of this flux. Flux. And uh, you can see that we've got our heat shrink there, so we'll find the best ways just with this, uh, this torch here. It's rapid. An update, I've spoke to Ford in order to replace this, it's part of the loom, so it'd be £480 and uh, we well, had to get a relay for them, that was £40 plus that, so I can't see anything else be this repaired by this way. You know, pull test, oh, there we go, that's strong, a little heat sink here at ready. Unless you want to take the red stuff back up the way. It's a bit on the short side, isn't it? It's going to hint, shrink the heat wrap, the heat shrink. Well, I'm thinking, I'm actually thinking about these other connections, that's why we use that. I think if we need that, I think that will do the job. Eh? Shrinking down nice, isn't it? Mm. Oh, that's not too bad, eh? Yeah, it is. I wonder if you can guess where we got our, our wee burner from. <laughs> Liddles. The heat shrink came off the Amazon, and I think, see, it's got the glue in it. You can see the glue oozing at the side, so makes it waterproof. Like that'll do it, eh? Yeah. So that's us put it all back together. Yeah. So, let's straighten that up. You can see our, our wire was a wee bit like hey, that's perfect. We'll just leave it at that, Roddy. Uh, put a lid on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, Ford actually calls this the air heater. It goes to the air heater, so once we get it up and running, we'll measure. It's got no amps coming out of the new. We measure down there. It's good. We're all good. So, we want to see if it. Well, we do. I don't know the strategy of the module, how it makes it work with temperature or anything like that, but we'll try it. You can see it's no pulling anything at the moment. But as I say, I don't know the strategy of this module when it does it. Let's give it a rave. No, it's no pulling anything new. But there it's sitting over, ticking at idle 13.3. So the usual rule of thumb is 13 and a half to 14 and a half. But, and this is a big gotcha, with these smart alternators, the battery will only, the alternator will only go into that realm if it thinks necessary to maintain the battery. Because actually once the car is started, the battery does not need to maintain that 13 and a half volts all the time because the engine management sees that as a load. That is only there to start the car and uh, maintain a steady voltage. So these can uh, this figure 
13 and a half to 14 and a half. Maybe a bit old school, but the very fact we're above 12.7 and it's doing its business and the computer is not complaining, let's give it a rave. And the other thing is, we've got a clean bill of health. Let's go back again. Uh, health report. So, this all quite happy. That's no bad right enough. There's what the battery's taking. 10 amps. So that's well on course. Anything, anything under 15 amps, brilliant. So we cannot complain. And we've got rid of that parasitic draw. Meant to say to you, in order to do a parasitic draw, we had to fuel the car to think it was stopped. So we had to trip that down, but let's just stop it. And this will prove that the parasitic draws away. Let's lock the car. And we'll watch. Let's take a dive down to two and a half volts. Oh. We'll just wait. And then it takes a dive down to one, oh, 0 0.9, so we're at one amp, and then it'll go to sleep fully. And I think we'll be down pretty low. But most importantly, Roddy's now back with the pieces. Is that right, Roddy? That's it. Right. Best of gear. Best of gear. And just when I finally shut off the camera, I went to sleep. So there you go. 120 milliamps. That's fine. It'll even lower than that. This is not exactly accurate. There. There we go. 100 milliamps, acceptable, as a fix.